Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm on a new boat from Nimbus, the T11. Now, the design team told me that they made this to maximize convertibility and space. So let's see how they've done it as I do a full features inspection and performance evaluation. And we'll start right here in the center of the boat where I think they've maximized that convertibility. It starts simply enough with everyone facing forward while we're in cruise mode. In this position, we've got more of a social gathering area with the two seats facing each other. Now we have opposing seating and great conversational atmosphere. Now we've got C-shaped seating and alfresco dining. And don't worry about tableware, Nimbus includes it in dedicated storage drawers under the seats. Remember, storage was one of their goals and we're just getting warmed up on that subject. Want to do a little fishing, maybe watch the kids play in the water? Just swing the seat backs and you're facing outward. And lastly, we can convert into a sunbed just by bringing this back. Now, I'd like to see this maybe latch in a couple of positions so that it can be an app-facing chaise lounge. And of course, if we put the seat back into position here again, we have another place to sit and relax and watch the kids swimming off the stern. Now there's an X edition package that gives you Alcantara suede two-tone through all of the seating area and goes right up into the helm. And it also has highlights for the cowls on the engines. And if the sun gets to be too much, we can put up a sunshade. There are four sockets that hold stanchions, and then it attaches to the trailing edge of the hardtop. And it makes no sense to have such a versatile seating area outdoors without having this refreshment area just ahead. Take a look at this. We've got a sink and a space here that can be made into an electric grill or a propane grill. That's the owner's choice. Just below, two storage drawers and notice that they are soft clothes. Refrigerated drawers underneath, and this can be any combination of refrigerator or freezer that the owner desires. Now with all of the entertainment going on in this area, it seemed natural to me to put maybe a remote control for the stereo in this position, but then I thought everybody's gonna be controlling the entertainment with their Bluetooth phones anyway, so what's the point? A Couple of thoughtful features right in this area as well. The lengthy handrails going down the sides and across the front, plus notice the tempered glass to both sides so your vision is not being blocked. A hatch in the center of the deck lifts to expose the fuel tanks, the battery boxes, battery charger, and a solar charger that's connected to the three 100 kilowatt chargers up on the roof. Now let's get into that storage that I was talking about. Take a look at this right in the center of the deck. Six feet, seven inches by five feet by two feet, five inches. So, I mean, this is deep enough to hold pretty much anything you want to carry you through the whole day. Not to mention what? Wife, kids, cat, dog, mother-in-law, put everything in here. To the sides, there's mechanical access. And notice there's another quick access hatch right underneath the sun pad. More storage to both sides of the sun pad. And these are deep enough to serve as fender storage. Still more storage just under the aft seat. With the seats in this position, the narrowest the passageway becomes is 16 inches. The bulwarks come up 29 inches and top out at 35, so there's a safety factor for the families. A hatch to the starboard side steps will lift to give us access to the diesel fuel fill because we can have a diesel heater on board. We have a wastewater pump out and the two fuel fills. To the port side is the fresh water fill. Nice job keeping that away from both of the fuel fills. And notice also that both of these areas have drains so that when we wash the bow area, all of the water drains right into this and overboard. Two steps up and the passageway stays at 16 inches. Now it comes up to 22 inches at the rails. There are three 12 inch cleats to each side of the boat. Plus look at this thick rub rail, it's four inches thick. That's what makes this boat also popular as a tender. Notice the added safety factor of the grab rail on top of the hardtop. And we have another social zone in the bow. Take a look at this. Grab rails to both sides, plus beverage holders. The sun pads are secured into place because I'm always a fan of when they're able to come up into Shay's lounge positions. And then you've got this lounge area up ahead that maxes out at 45 inches wide. Now, as with the cockpit, we can also erect a sunshade in this area. That'll put the whole bow and stern, in fact, the entire length of the boat, under shade. Now, moving forward, there's additional seating here, as I pointed out, but I have a seat right here as well, so it'd be sensible to get the optional table for this position. There are also cushions that can go along the sides with the cap rails, so now we can sit on all sides of the table. Brilliant solution. 
At the bow, 12 inch cleats are to both sides of the foredeck. There's an open bow rail plan so we can have bow end boarding. Inside is a Lumar windlass leading to a through the stem anchor roller and it's nice to see that they included a safety chain to prevent accidental deployments. Now let's look at the helm area, it's starboard mounted. Comes with dual 12 inch Simrad displays and neither the NSS Evo 3 displays. A nice upgrade because you can put six different screens on one. Vessel view display just below, all of our electrical switches, the JPO joystick, digital throttle and shift. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base, zip wake, trim tab controller, remote control for the searchlight. A couple of extra features that I like, there are beverage holders over to the left hand side, nice deep cubby, stereo remote, and a molded in footrest just below that. The helm seats adjust fore and aft. Just below, there's a flip down footrest for the two observer seats, but I'd like to see a different style because when you're in the driving position, bracket for it is right at the position where it hurts your leg. And I can't help but notice these convenient and sturdy grab rails to both sides. And seriously, have to give high marks to Nimbus for adding the frost vents in front of the dash. Now it's also noteworthy that if you look at the perimeter of the hardtop, there are tracks, so all of this area can be enclosed for three season boating. We access the cabin from a companionway to the port side of the helm and notice that the stairs are offset, so be sure to step in right foot first. Once we're inside, a five feet, 11 inches of overhead clearance. There's a storage cabinet over to the port hand side, even behind this cabinet and look at how deep it goes. Plenty of space on top. There's an open storage space over on the left and that can be optioned out for a refrigerator. Ship's electrical panel, just behind that. Now before we get into the features down here, let's first take a note of a couple of things. First off, the fit and finish. Nice satin finish, bright tones keep it nice and bright down below along with the natural light. We can get air conditioning down here or a diesel fired heater. Now just behind here, it's a mid cabin. It's a full length mirror on the inside of the door. The berth measures in at 78 by 48 with an overhead height of 19. There's narrow storage to the starboard side and deep storage plus mechanical access to the port side. Now this is a comfortable seat. There's storage right alongside that's easy to access. Wouldn't it be nice to compartmentalize that storage with makeup and maybe put a mirror right here. That would be a nice touch for the ladies. Just forward is the head compartment and about this size usually has a wet head, but this one actually has a separate shower that shares space with the electric flush toilet and gets closed off with a curved acrylic door. There's a lengthy hull side window, a Corian counter with a stainless steel single basin sink underneath that. Fully forward, there's a V berth, 77 inches by 53 in the middle, 35 inches to this position here. It's a little bit variable, but to the lowest point, 35 inches. Opening port lights to both sides, lengthy hull side windows to both port and starboard, and a mirror fully forward. Storage is still a continuing theme. It's under the berth, under the seats to both sides, and behind the seats. And of course, we can close this whole area off with a privacy curtain. Standard engines are the twin 300s that we have here. We can go to 350s or 400s. The Nimbus T11 has a length overall of 40 feet 7 inches, a beam of 11 feet 4 inches, and a draft of 3 feet. With an empty weight of 12,345 pounds, 49% fuel, and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 14,838 pounds. With the twin 300 horsepower Mercury Verados turning 17 pitch 4 blade propellers and wound up to 6,000 RPM, our speed topped out at 48 miles per hour. Best cruise came in at 4,500 RPM and 28.4 miles per hour. At that speed, the 23.8 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.2 miles per gallon and a range of 241 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 224.5 gallon total fuel capacity. In acceleration tests, we reached planing speed in 4.9 seconds, continued to 20 miles per hour in 6.3, 30 in 10.8, and 40 in 17.4 seconds. Once at planing speed, she'll hold plane on down to 14.3 miles per hour. Really impressive handling characteristics. I love the versatility of the cockpit seating, plus storage everywhere. Everything seems to be checking off all of the boxes on the Nimbus T11. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation. 
For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.